everyone, and I mean everyone, doesn't matter where they work or, or who they represent, you know, has tried to turn this into Lane Kiffin versus Nick Saban and everyone, especially you, know the storylines. Uh, how do you, or, or do, does it really matter if that overwhelms what is really going to be happening at 2.30 Saturday? Well, we mentioned last year, and I joked with him before the game, you know, um, well, we'd be in a lot better shape if it was me versus him uh, <laughs> from an age standpoint and him be one year off of his hip replacement. So I'd, I'd be less, I don't think we'd be such a big underdog then. You, you faced everyone there is to face in, in your many stops along the way, you know, extremely well, well regarded coaches, some of the best of all time in the NFL and in college. But is it different when you, when you go up against Nick Saban because of his stature and the fact that you worked for him for a number of years? I mean, it, it may be, you know, the week leading up, once the game starts, you don't think about who the head coach is on the other side. You're so busy making adjustments, trying to get players in the best position to win that uh, you forget about that. A lot of times you forget about even where you're playing. So, um, you know, there's a lot of build up to it. But once it starts, that, that doesn't really matter. You know, we played him before and been in that stadium. Haven't been on the visiting side, what, I guess, in about 13 years. And so maybe we'll play defense like that, Paul, when we didn't give up a touchdown the whole day. Yeah, I mean, it, it is worth remembering, not that you want to be remembered, uh, reminded of it, but uh, in, in 2009, uh, Alabama's national championship hopes were nearly derailed uh, by a, a Tennessee team that you were coaching. It um, <laughs> does seem like a long time ago, though. It does, uh, one kick away. But, um, you know, I, I told him, I said, you have another national championship because we can't make a field goal. So you're welcome. <laughs> is uh, you mentioned the talking to him before the game and uh, and there will be a thousand cameras on both of you uh sometimes those conversations seem pretty you know, pretty irrelevant uh when you talk to him i mean what, what do you guys talk about they really are irrelevant i mean both people are ready for the game it's really just some tradition that they have and so you go out there and you know hey he'll say welcome and you know talk about the weather or how's everything, um, you know, how's, how's Miss Terry doing? That's about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad to know that uh, my mind was not uh, f disappointing me when I watch these things because they do seem rather lame. Uh, I mean, what, what do people really think that we talk about out there? Like, you know, hey, you know, we're going to really work on your safety on some double moves today. You know, I mean, <laughs> there ain't a whole lot to say. <laughs> Talking to Lane Kiffin here uh, about the game. Uh, Lane, let's talk about your team because, I mean, I, obviously we could, we could obsess over the relationship between you and Nick Saban forever, and we'll come back to that at some point down the road. But uh, how, how do you feel uh, about, about your team right now? I mean, I mean, we were four games into it, and uh, you looked really good. Yeah, and we had a bye, so really we're three games in. Um, we got a lot of work to do. You know, we, we've not played – you know, a top 25 team, let alone the number one team. So we, we have a lot of work. It's a long season. Obviously, this is a huge game with a lot of attention on it. But, you know, it's a 12-game season and a lot of work to do in our second year here. Matt Corral is getting uh, so much attention and deservedly so. You've coached some amazing quarterbacks in, in your time. Uh, how would you compare him in, in terms of the talent and the ability to others you have coached? Well, he may not be the biggest, not the fastest, uh, but, you know, he would be up there and, you know, his ability to make throws at different arm angles would probably be better than anyone um, of all of them. And so he's a very unique talent. We're very fortunate. I remind our fans, I remind our coaches all the time, like, you know, enjoy this while you have it, you know, because you're going, you're going to wish you had this someday and, you know, Knock on wood, I mean, the guy basically hardly ever misses a throw. And, um, you know, that, that's pretty pretty fortunate to be around. Coach, I, I hate to keep harping on the attention uh, that, that you have received, that your team has received, but I am curious what it's like to be on the other side. You, you at least from a social media standpoint, look like you're getting a kick out of it, regardless of what people are saying uh, do you let any of this stuff bother you I, I really don't um, I mean I know I reacted to one yesterday and I just did another interview about it I just thought it was unusual um, 
you know, normally those type of things are said about you by, you know, some fan, you know, in some chat room, not a, you know, a professional media member. So uh, I thought it was a little bit different and had some fun with it. And especially when it's coming from someone that's never met you and doesn't know you at all. So whatever. It is what it is. Yeah. And for those who don't know, and uh, Michael Wilbon uh, on PTI uh, yesterday, you know, went, went after you. And, and I have to say it was, it was surprising. Um, it seemed, you know, if, if somebody had said that about you eight or nine years ago, maybe there, there would be some justification. Maybe there wouldn't be. I don't know. I, I'm kind of awkward in saying that since I said some of those things eight or nine years ago. <laughs> but I did see it yesterday. I said, God, that guy fine bombed me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, you, you laughed it off, even though he is a very prominent person uh, who not only used to be a sports writer, at the Washington Post, but is one of the most familiar faces on ESPN. Yeah, I probably would have cared years ago. I, I really don't. Um, like I said, it's somebody that's never met me, never covered us, never been around us. Um, you know, and to say that never, I've never done anything, you know, whatever. It was kind of like so far out there that you kind of got to laugh at it. Did you, do you feel, uh, always interesting asking somebody to evaluate themselves, but, but do you feel like a different coach than you were eight or nine years ago? I do completely. Um, and I, I joke with you about it. Um, I, you know, saying got fine bomb, but I think what you said at the time was, you know, probably, probably realistic to what was happening and immature and um, very young and, and made a lot of mistakes. So I would like to think that I've grown and different now. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content. Subscribe to ESPN+.